What's going on guys, it's Nate's Way and this is Crossbeats Production. So I want to share with you guys my color scheme that I use for my Studio One. And um, I'll actually attach a link for my email in this description of the, um, the video. So if you want the color scheme, I can actually email it to you. Um, and um, that way it's easy for you guys to get it. But I want to show you, first off, I'm going to make a mixing video on this track here. So I'll quickly play the track to you as well. And um, I'll also share the color scheme on this, this uh, link on the video. Remember to give me a thumbs up, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Also remember when you do subscribe, make sure you hit the little bell on the, um, the subscription button there because that actually gives you notifications so you can get more and more videos that I put out and new content and all the stuff that I put out this year. So um, anyway, nonetheless, I want to show you how I made this color scheme and quickly give you a, um, I guess, an understanding of how this works. So. If you click on your, uh, well, I guess it depends if you've got a Mac or you've got a um, PC, but it's in the preference section anyway. So if you go into the general tab here, it'll have that little cog thing. You click on that, come across to appearance, and you have this little setup here. Now, the way that it works is basically for the color scheme, um, you can kind of change the color to whatever color you want it to be generally. Um, I, I kind of, I, I mess around with it frequently. I don't stick with the same thing all the time, but... Um, I change it whatever suits my mood basically or suits the situation that I'm in. So obviously that's the color the background there that you can change and you can have it to whatever color you want. Um, and um, this also, basically that's the hue sh shift so that gives you that color there. Uh, saturation wise, obviously it's just the saturation of the color so it's the, the, the intensity of that color. Um, so as you can see, the more I move it around now, the more intense it is and um, that's what saturation does there. Uh, if you're if you're messing around with this, you'll kind of figure it out yourself anyway. But luminescence uh, just creates the brightness of the the screen there, so that changes how the um, the color comes in brightness and and darkness basically. Uh, so the more darkness you create, uh, obviously it's not as luminescent as it would be if it's either all the way up to 100%. Contrast, as you would know if you've used a TV, the same kind of thing works with these features here. So obviously the contrast. Uh, just increases the color intensity and things like that. Um, and just watch the mixer kind of thing as well. You can watch these tracks, it kind of changes on that too. But um, okay, so the arrangement, this is the arrangement section. So this is the background for the entire DAW and this is just the arrangement section. So I'm sure if you messed around with it, if you like Pro Tools and stuff like that, you can make your background more white because I know the Pro Tools kind of arrangement is more white than than black. Um, and I, I kind of like the black kind of dark kind of color to it. That's the setting that I go with. Um, and the contrast, obviously the way that contrast thing here works is if you look at these little, um, I guess the markings on, on the, the arrangement window, it makes those more sharp and you can see them more clearly. So I kind of like mine to be pretty sharp and, and to be able to see where the lines are. Just for arrangement purposes, it makes it a little bit easier. I mean, if you don't and you like it to be just kind of blended in, obviously pull this all the way down, you can't see anything. So, I mean, it's hardly visible. It is a little bit visible, but hardly there. Um, anyway, so what you can do if you want to store the preset, you go into here, you can save it to whatever you want it to be and hit OK. And uh, that stores it. Then, so if you want to reset it to the reset default, that just puts it straight to the center. And um, that's the default color I believe that you get with this um, DAW. So anyway, I've got a loaded preset. I'm going to share this preset with you guys. So if you're interested in saving this preset, you can definitely do it. That's the preset that I've got set up on my uh, Studio One 3. So I'll save that. And if you want to hit me on email, you can definitely do that. Just ask me for the preset. I'm happy to send it to you. It's not a, a covenant preset or anything. I just made it. It's how, how I liked it to be. So um, somebody did ask me in the comments how I how I made the preset or to share it, so I'm happy to share that. And uh, this is more or less um, a gift to you guys. If you want this preset, you can definitely um, hit me up and I'll email it to you. So I'll send that through an email and let's get to the rest of the video. So this track is a track that I made entirely within Machine and then I've bounced out the files and I've put it into Studio One for mixing. Now, you could perfectly mix a track in Machine, and I'll show you the actual um, project here. So this is the way it was set up in Machine. And I just, for some reason or another, I got creative feelings, and I went straight to Machine, and I just laid it down, and it just came together in Machine. And sometimes that's fine. I mean, if you use Machine, you use Studio One, whatever you use, as long as it's creative and it helps you 
create that creative flow or the process. Um, that's really what it comes down to. It doesn't really matter what DAW you use. I don't know why people have DAW wars. That to me is just stupid. Um, I think that if you're happy and you're comfortable, you can make a beat on whatever it is. Do it. Who cares what anyone thinks about your DAW? Just make your, your music. That's all that matters. So anyway, made that in machine. I bounced it out. Um, I made a video on how to do that if you want to see how to do it, but I'll give you a quick explanation if you're not familiar with machine uh, just briefly. So I exported this and it, it pretty much came, came out in stems the way I showed you in Studio One. And the way I got it here was created all instead of loops because normally it's in loop function. I put that to all and then I've got that on the sound output. So it creates the, the uh, sound output in an entire stem for each sound that it's clicked on. So obviously you can click on these tabs. You can isolate the sounds, put them out, put them in, whatever you want, take them out, put, take them in, I guess you want, want to put it that way. Um, so I've got a Rhodes keys obviously in here. I've got a piano, all that, all that stuff there. I exported it into a folder and then I've gone from that folder um, and just dragged all of the stems into Studio One. It's not that hard to figure that out. In case you don't know how that works, I'll just show you briefly. I don't actually want to do it because it's just going to put my files back in here again. Uh, but I've got my folder here. And what I would do is get those, highlight all the stems, scroll down, and then just drag them straight into that like that. So, I mean, if you're if you're looking at doing things fast, that's quite a fast uh, creative process to, to get your stuff from, from machine into Studio One and, and vice versa. If you wanted to, I guess you could bounce out stems out of this and put it into machine as a... As a a sample or whatever. Um, anyway, so nonetheless, let me play this track to you. It, it kind of comes in slowly. I've made this transition in three different types of transitions within this track. You'll see how it sounds. I'll play the whole entire track actually if you want to listen to it. And um, if you don't, fast forward it obviously and then you can look at the other part of this um, video which will later on be a part two of how to mix the track from scratch. And then I'll do mastering on this track as well, and I'll show you how I did that. So let me just play this track to you, and you can hear it from the get-go. Let's go.
Okay, so that's the track. Now, it's obviously almost 100% done. I, I don't know whether or not I want to keep it exactly how it is. I mean, when I do more mixing on it, I'll probably discover some certain things that I want to mess around with or maybe add to or take away. I don't know. But as is, this is the track that I kind of came up with. And as you can see, it's got a couple of transitions within the track. Now, this section here, obviously, it's the, the real low-end bass that I've put in there. I've got to mess around with that a bit to get that to stick out a bit more. Um, but I didn't want to include that entirely in the whole entire track. I wanted it to be a section of the track. And this track is more or less the type of track that you would get that's more, I guess, storytelling. And you would kind of maybe even talk to some part of the track or have a story on some part of the track. I don't know. I mean, when I created it, I just had a real crazy idea that I wanted to put together and it really just sort of came together and it didn't really have any any kind of structure at all. It just sort of flowed and that was it. But um, as you can see, there's a lot of different parts to the track. It kind of splits the drums up more at the end and that's kind of where I guess you could put a rap and, and kind of have that kind of thing going on. But um, the initial part of the track, there's a section where you could, could probably rap on it and then you'd have the story kind of thing in the center. I don't know how it all work, work in the end. But Nonetheless, I want to show you this track and explain to you kind of the idea and the concept behind it. So first off, what I looked at before I got into anything with mixing was to kind of level balance all the instruments together and make sure they sat right in a static mix. Um, so what a static mix is, if you don't understand what I'm saying, is basically it's the levels of each track. And as you can see down here, the mixer is pretty much even. I haven't really messed around with that too much, only just slightly to get sort of some cohesiveness in the track. But what I did before I bounced it out of machine was I got a static mix and I didn't add any plugins, no EQ. Uh, I don't believe I have any compression on the drums either at this stage from memory. Uh, I can just go back in there and check uh, on the drums individually. Yeah, not, so none of the drums have any, any compression on them at all. Um, they're basically a static instrument as it is and then once I get the static mix right that's when I start to I will start to add compression and things like that um, that that explanation I just gave you that's no rule of thumb you can mix however the heck you want to mix I don't want to hear comments in the comments say, saying you're telling people the wrong way because this is the way I do it if you don't like the way I do it obviously do it the way you do it but that's that's another thing so in, in mixing my my tracks, there's there's always different ways you can attack, attack a mix. And sometimes you can attack a mix with mix bus compression as your first avenue. Um, or sometimes you can go in there and mix your individual tracks and, and build up slight compression throughout the entire mix to a final compression amount. Maybe you have a slight amount of mix bus compression on that as well. Um, it's really, it comes down to the creative flow of your track. I know I've said this before many times and what I what I try and drum into you guys' heads is to understand that when you create a track, um, the first thing that you're, you're thinking about is when you create that track is what it's going to sound like for another another listener to listen to. Now, um, when I when I create music, I because I rap myself and I, I am, I'm slap, like I guess I'm an artist in that sense and I, I think of it as an artist's perspective, I, I tend to think of the track and I try and work around a track in that perspective of the artist's mind and them rapping on it or if, if it's not myself, somebody else rapping on the track or whatever it might be. I, I try and think of that and then I try and think of the creative uh, aspects of how I can make it sound unique and I, I try and think of the aspects of how I can make it sound like uh, something that's not going to bore you and something you're not going to just press play and then hear and then the same repetitive you know, four bar loop happens every single time. That's that's kind of what, I guess at the start when you first make a beat, that's kind of where you start at. But um, if you can slowly move away from that and progress into something that's more creative and, and more flowing in the beat and changes up, like things change up and stuff like that. Like it's just about making the listener want to keep listening. So, I mean, at the end of the day, this isn't by far an end, a perfect track or anything like that. I'm just saying in creating a track, you, that's the kind of thing that you aim for. So, um, I mean... That's that's what I do anyway, at least. So I'll, I'll do a create a part two of this and mix the entire song as much as I can to, to get to the point where it sounds how I think it should sound before I master the track. And then I'll do a mastering session on this track and I'll explain the breakdown of all that as well. Um, and I'll try and show you guys the processes, the plugins, the mindset, the reasoning and everything why I grab a certain thing and why I do certain things on the track so you guys can understand that. 
Um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm getting bitten by mosquitoes here. Get off me. <laughs> Um, at the end of the day, it just comes down to the track in the end having um, a life and having real, real movement behind it and and expressing a message. That's what really music comes down to and giving you emotional feel. So um, I know when I create tracks that, that have emotional feel, I know that other people will, will tend to connect with those as well. So nonetheless, I want to create this quick video for you guys. I don't know how long it's getting now, but anyway, I hope it's been informative for you guys. And also, if you want the um, the background for this Studio One that I've set up, definitely hit me up on the email. I'm happy to share it and I'll let you guys have that. So from the rest of you guys, I hope you guys have a good new year. I hope you guys enjoy Christmas and peace.